Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my first uh, video uh, on this YouTube page. Um, the, really the whole goal of the, of the YouTube page is to make sure that I'm up to date with literature. Um, and also, one of the reasons why I wanted to start a YouTube page is because I think it's it's something that I want to look back when I'm done with residency and see how much I knew or how little I knew and see the growth that I'll I'll have in the next coming years. Uh, but most importantly, I also want to be able to have these videos so that other Hispanic um, students are able to look at them and say, um, you know, they are able to identify with me. Um, I remember growing up, I didn't really have any mentors um, that looked like me. Um, and I still appreciated the mentors that I had, but I think it's also important to have mentors that look like you because um, in the end, coming from a background um, with my parents didn't have an education, um, they only graduated high school, I think it was important for me to see someone with that same background um, and being able to tell myself that if they did it, I would be able to do it as, do it as well. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to have different videos. I'll be talking about <clears throat> I'll be talking about essentially literature, but I'll also be giving some motivational videos um, that I myself will probably need um, because residency are, is hard. So it'll be nice for me to look back and see how happy I was during those moments. Um, but I also want to be able to chronicle the life of a resident. Um, and it's easy for us to look at the media and realize that maybe um, to think that residence and medicine is, is an easy life and it's luxurious and it has a lot of glamour, um, which I you know I definitely don't think that uh, I that's not the reasons why I went into medicine. At least uh, I went into medicine because I wanted to be there for the patients. Um, and there's a lot of um, residents in my class that I feel the same as me. Um, and I think it's important for us to be able to talk about our feelings um, and let you guys know if you guys want to pursue medicine that it isn't all uh, glamour. It's actually filled with a lot of sacrifice. Um, a lot of endless hours um, and if it's something that you want to pursue after seeing the videos then I'm glad that I at least helped you make that decision um, so today I'll be discussing with that being said out today I want to kind of jump into my first video discussing um, a pulmonary critical um, trial um, I'm actually a second year internal medicine resident I graduated from medical school um, like a year and a half ago um, I went to school in Chicago um, and I'm doing my residency now close to home uh, and I want to go into pulmonary critical care and and so today and I'll, and I'll be I'll, I'll be discussing other journals as well not just primary pulmonary critical care but today I thought it would be interesting for me to discuss um, acute respiratory dist distress syndrome um, and there's a, there was a journal um, that really changed the way we look at um, acute, acute respiratory distress syndrome and it was the ARDS net um, protocol trial um, a lot of people don't know, but actually the name of it is ARMA. It was the ARMA trial, and it was published in 2000. And before the publication of this trial, um, there was a lot of incident. There was a lot of mortality with patients with ARDS. Um, it was discovered in the 1970s, um, and during that time, people didn't really know how to manage it. They didn't know the ideology of it. And now we know that ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, is essentially a, a uh, systemic inflammatory disease that um, is primarily localized in the lungs um, and it has many different etiologies. Um, it, it, it occurs um, from patients who have sepsis, from patients who are drowning, pancreatitis, just really any severe inflammation of the body will, could cause acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, so it will be important for us to talk about kind of the criteria, the, um, the management, the event settings. Uh, all in one video because I hopefully I'll try to make it short, uh, but I'll be providing um, little um, on the summaries here. You'll just be you, you'll be have a, I'll have a voiceover, but you'll be able to see kind of the criteria. But for acute respiratory distress syndrome, it's actually diagnosed by something called the Berlin criteria. Uh, it's a couple criteria that we look at. Um, one of them is patients have to be presenting within an onsighting um, event within the first seven days. Uh, it could be any causes for them to be, have re uh, respiratory issues, and it has to be within seven days. So something had to happen within seven days. Um, the other thing is you have to have bilateral inf uh, infiltrates, and they cannot be a lung collapse. They, it cannot be a lung nodule. Um, and the third uh, would be patients, this uh, infiltrates or this bilateral edema 
cannot be cardio, um, cardiogenic in nature, so patients cannot have heart failure, causing them to have bilateral uh, edema or infiltrates. Um, and then the other one would be um, patients with um, a severe pulmonary, um, what we call PF ratio, which is PAO2 divided by FiO2. It has to be less than 300. Um, and 300 is um, mild, 200 is, 200 to 300 is um, um, mild, uh, sorry, moderate, and less than 100 is mild. Um, so any, any, anything less than 300 there, they meet that criteria. Uh, so that's essentially most of them. Uh, and then the other one would be patients have to have ventilatory support of at least greater than five PEEP. Um, so that's a brilliant criteria, and I think it's important to kind of know it because especially if you're in the ICU, you'll be seeing a lot of patients, not a lot, but you'll be seeing some patients that potentially might meet that criteria. And you should empirically treat these patients with uh, ARDS net protocol until you rule out ARDS. Um, so ARDS, why was ARD, why was the event, so why was this, uh, this so important? It actually is so important because we were able to realize that there's actually event settings that we can do to be able to increase, decrease the mortality of patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome. And if you know the physiology, you, now you understand that ARDS is, is like a lung inflammation. The alveoli will collapse on themselves, um, and you won't be able to get any ventilation uh, from these patients with ARDS. Um, so the, the logic behind it is you have to have patients with a high PEEP because PEEP is uh, uh, essentially is a um, respiratory uh, pressure that it will e open up the alveoli so that you could give them oxygen. Um, so, and then you also, um, so you have to have a high PEEP, and you also have to have a low tidal volume. And the reason behind a low tidal volume is you wanna be able to prevent um, opening and reopening of, um, of the lungs because that also causes um, atelectatic changes as well. And that goes along with the PEEP also. Um, so that's why you need a low tidal volume. Um, and then the other, the other one would be, um, Looking at uh, the so what they did actually in the trial well, before I get ahead of myself, uh, they looked at those two markers, and the question was, at what point w would you see a decrease in mortality? And they actually did a randomized controlled trial where they looked at patients with six to um, eight six to eight cc's per kilogram of tidal volume uh, versus patients with twelve cc's per kilogram tidal volume, and what they found, and a lot of people it's kind of a lot of people don't know this, but actually what they found is that by being able to get a uh, peak, um, a plateau, uh, I'm sorry, a plateau a pressure of less than 30, um, they would be able to see a decrease in mortality. And the only group that actually showed a decrease in mortality were patients with, um, with a tidal volume of 6 to 8 cc's per kilogram um, tidal volume. Per, that's the ideal body weight, so you have to calculate the ideal body weight for those patients. Um, and that's the group that found the most evidence to be able to uh, get a decrease in mortality. Um, so at the end of the day, when you're changing vent settings, it's, it's important to start at 8 cc's per kilogram and then play around with the PEEP, high PEEP, until you have a plateau pressure um, of less than 30 because that, so does the, the, the tidal volume and plateau and PEEP is just a means to an end to be able to get a, a plateau pressure because plateau pressure is actually what they, what was a marker of actual of, of actual mortality, and they found that a decrease in, uh, in um, plateau pressure actually decreased mortality. Um, so that's why you see the RDS net protocol. There's patients who have high PEEP, low FIL2, etc., high tidal volume, low. So those are different settings. That's just to guide you um, to be able to reach a a plateau pressure of less than 30. Um, so and I've, that's how that's the way I think about it. And um, and it makes make for me it makes sense in that that fashion. Um, so that's exactly essentially what the journals um, was suggesting, um, and it was actually a very good a very good um, trial. The, they were very clinically significant. The p values were like 0.005 uh, between the groups, um, showing that the six to eight cc uh, tidal volume was more significant. And it was only significant in the sense that it was able to achieve a peak plateau pressure of less than 30 uh, for that group. Um, without causing too much significant increases in PEEP, causing uh, bare trauma. And tidal volume actually, uh, low tidal volume actually decreases volumetric um, trauma in patients. Um, so the other, actually, what are, so what are the next, what are, where do we go from here, right? What would be the next steps in, um, in, this, um, in this kind of 
clinical setting of, and, and decreasing further mortality of ARDS. There's actually a discuss, discussion now about um, driving pressures. Um, and there was an actual ad hoc analysis done by Amato, which is a Brazilian researcher and clinician in Brazil. Um, he looked at um, multi-analysis data, uh, so it was all theoretical, but he used a multivariate analysis looking at, um, the, like I said, the data, and they actually found that the, the more significant factor, even though ple plateau pressure was the more significant factor in the ARMA trial, in his analysis, he actually found that the driving pressure was most significant between 13 and 15. That's where you found the more decreased in mortality. Um, so it'll be important to us to kind of see the future with with those kind of researchers that are doing the data, theoretical data. Um, and so anyways, so with that being said, I think that's an important um, trial to remember. Um, and just kind of remember those concepts, and I think it will help you uh, with the next ARDS patient that you might see.